know you are and will be. And we thank you for this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? All right. It's always good to hear you guys. Good to see you guys in the house of the Lord. Man, amazing. We keep seeing new, newer faces, newer faces, so we know that the word is getting out there. The spirit of God is flowing out in the town, so welcome. If it's your first time to Calvary, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and stand with it this morning. We can worship. Feel free to clap along. It's free. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise. something a little bit different for you guys worshiping the Lord I just to wake you up shake those bones out a little bit amen God is so good
Let's speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing, but circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee in Jesus' name. I pray that it breaks through what happened today. I pray miracles of all your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise He is faithful to keep. I speak the name no great could ever hold. And he is greater, he is stronger, he's the God of possibles. I pray for your healing, the circumstances will change. I pray that the fear and sad will leave in Jesus' name. I pray for the breakthrough, what happens today? I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, oh come believe it, oh, come receive it, oh, come pray your Lord is given. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee in Jesus' name. I pray that it break through what happened today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe.
may be seated. Good morning, Calvary Chapel. Uh, just a couple. You we're here Wednesday. We talk about the tabernacle. Talked about our children going up there on uh, this Wednesday. Uh, they'll be leaving the church about 5:15. I have some uh, permission slips in the back. If you're here today and your child wasn't here Wednesday, then uh, and you want to send him or her second grade on up. Okay. Uh, this is tabernacle is in McGregor, Texas. And everything inside of this tabernacle points to Jesus Christ, okay? Everything in it points to Him. And we need to teach them at an early age, all right? So if your child hasn't signed up, I have some permission slips. They're going to be leaving. We're going to be leaving here. I think there's like four of us, five of us adults going. So uh, maybe more than that. But anyway, we're going to be leaving here at 5.15 Wednesday, okay? So make sure you get your permission slip in. Another thing uh, is this here. Uh, this Thursday, we had a detective come in and talk to us. It's about the Waco schools. I'm going to read it to you. Project Summer Safe Start is a cl collaboration between Waco Independent School District, Waco Police Department, and local ministries and churches churches from Waco. They're going to let us in the school. They're going to let us in the school. We can wear our shirts. And what we're going to do, I have a sign-up sheet back here in the back. What we're going to do is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're going to be able to go in walk the premises with our shirts on. We're going to be able to talk to the kids. We're going to be there for an hour in the morning, an hour at lunch if you want to, and then an hour when they release them, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. If you're interested, I have to have your name on that piece of paper. If you're interested, I have to have your name on that piece of paper today. I have to turn it in Monday, okay? This is a big deal. This, they've been doing this in Houston for a number of years now, and Waco PD has seen such a change in Houston area schools that they're adopting it. They're saying, you know what, we need to step up and do this too. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a time to quit complaining and jump in there with both feet and just start taking action. That's all right? right? I have a sign-up sheet back here. You can sign up for Monday morning. You can sign up for Monday lunch. You can sign up for... Uh, Monday evening, you can sign up for Tuesday morning, Tuesday lunch, Tuesday evening. It doesn't matter, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah, what a great opportunity. At least they recognize that, you know, the, the, the detective, he came to our uh, trailer, food trailer on Friday and said, hey, I wanted to meet you. I talked to your assistant pastor. He said, man, we're really interested in trying to get the violence down. There's a lot of violence in the schools as you pay attention. And so... They see the spiritual impact that churches have, and they appreciate us, what we do for the city. And so that, what a great opportunity that was. Also, um, there's been a lot of good things going on with us. Where did my Bible go? There's a purple Bible. I know it looks feminine. <laughs> I got a purple Bible somewhere around here. Net. <laughs> Net. I was carrying it around. I was trying to get comfortable carrying a purple Bible around. That's what it was. That's why it's not up here. I gave my son, Jacob, my Bible. He asked for a Bible, and I've been waiting for him to ask me so I could give it to him. And so I gave him my Bible that I've been studying out of for years. And I went back and marked a bunch of stuff in there before I gave it to him. I, there's a lot of things that the Lord has been doing with us as a church, as a community. And listen, what I'm but I'm hoping you're hearing it's about the Lord, not about us, not about me, not about you, not about people. It's about him and what he's doing. Because without him, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. And um, we are, I think, the, the, the more the world is becoming darker, you can sense, you can sense how important it is that we as the church be the church and, and not just go to church to get a good teaching, to get a good sermon, but to truly hope that the Lord speaks some life into your soul, into your spirit that will transform people around you, that will transform your community, that will transform your unsaved loved ones that are around you. As we've been studying in the book of Luke, as we've been studying... 
the life of Jesus. Um, we're in Luke chapter 16, by the way, if you want to go ahead and turn there. Um, this, is it this Saturday, Michelle? Is the, we, we, we had a, um, we had a tragedy, part of our family, and there's going to be a motorcycle ride in memory of, a, what was her name? Madison Lassiter. She lost her life last weekend um, in a tragic 28-year-old, I believe she was 24-year-old mother. Um, her baby comes to church with, with Michelle, which is the grandmother. And anyways, they're doing a, a benefit ride. If anybody would like to ride, has a motorcycle, would like to be a part of that, get with Michelle after church. she gave you the details. You know, that's another reason that what we do here is so important because we never know, you know, when, when, when it's the end. And um, I think the Lord is, is very... <laughs> it's funny how the, you know, the... Because my mind, it's hard for my mind to realize that God knew the beginning to the end. It's hard for me to understand that God knew every conversation between the beginning and what's going to be the end conversation, the last conversation. It's hard for me to comprehend that. And I'm sure it is for you too. But he does. And he has it already written out. Now, with that being said, that does not diminish my responsibility. My responsibility is to hope that I'm doing what he wrote about me. That's what I try to live up to. I try to imagine what he would write about me if he could write the best things about me. Then I try to live up to what I would hope the best things about me would be. Right? If I believe in that, that's the way, that's the way I'd go. And instead of just sitting back going, you know what? I guess God wrote me down. I guess he wrote me through the darkness to be in darkness. No. Man, God has a good story for all of us. He has a good life for us and, and, and we can choose to do it. So here's the deal is the Lord is teaching. He's teaching the disciples and he's rebuking the Pharisees all at the same time. He's talking to both of them. He's, but here's the deal is we got to remember that the, that the people that he's talking to are very poor financially, spiritually poor, and emotionally poor. Imagine if you can living in Mexico right now. Imagine living in Mexico where you can't call the police if somebody breaks in your house. In Mexico, in Nuevo Laredo, you can't call the police if somebody breaks in your house. You know who you call? The bad guys. The local bad guys that are over your neighborhood. You call those guys. Now, they'll come investigate, but then they put you under their rule. So now you're controlled by them. So imagine you live in a world where that's your life. You, you, don't have, you don't have government assistance. You don't really have the freedom to just do what you want to do, go what you want to, you know, at your own pace in life. And you can't just go start a business because if you start a business and it's successful, somebody's going to show them and go, you got to pay the tax man. And I'm not the federal government tax man. I'm this tax man. Imagine living under that kind of stress. That's what the people during Jesus' day lived under. They lived under that kind of tyranny. They lived under that kind of oppression. They lived under that. Me and you don't know that unless you were born in some city like that. We don't know that. We know that our government helps us. We know that our government will give us money. We know that our government has assistance. We know that we can cry to our government all day long for our stuff and maybe get a voice heard. So if Jesus Christ is walking the people to heaven out of this life. He's focusing on the common people, the hardworking man, the man that's oppressed. He's focusing on the man that's carrying the burden of life. The man that's carrying the burden of life gets up every day, works hard, what he's got to do to pay his bills to take care of his family, right? That's what we think a man's supposed to do, get up in the morning, work hard, put everything he's got into his kids, into his families to make sure they got what they need. Now, in the old days, you, you did that by chopping wood, raising chickens, milking cows, keeping the pigs fed, sewing your own clothes, making sure your roof don't leak. You were responsible for your whole life. That's a whole other mindset that me and you have as we listen to Christ teach us what he was teaching people with that kind of mindset. So we have to try to figure out that kind of mindset before we even hear what he's saying. Because if you're just listening to American mindset, you're going to miss. You're going to miss what he's trying to say to you about this life. Because what he's trying to tell us about life is not always what we want to hear. There are preachers 
that'll tell you all day long, God wants you rich, blessed, full, fat, dressing nice, having this, having that. God wants that. God wants that is the most ridiculous ridiculous thing. How can you say that if you can't preach that message in China? Go tell a Chinese. Tell somebody from China that wants to believe in the Lord and have a Bible that God wants them to be rich and blessed. And what are you doing living in this little hole? What are you hiding underground from the law for? You're a, key, you're a child of the king. You should be able to do what you want to do and have all you can have. But if that message don't work in China... It should not work here. The gospel, the gospel is the same. Every man, rich, famous, not so famous, has the same access to the most beautiful message that if we'd listen, you'd hear. Because this world is winding down. Your life is winding down. Luke chapter 14. Jesus had just rebuked the Pharisees on not appreciating a lost sheep, prodigal son. He just was teaching them how angels in heaven rejoice over one soul saved. He was getting on to them because they were calling him out because he was healing somebody on the Sabbath. And he said, you get upset with me for healing on the Sabbath, but you'll pull your donkey out of a hole on the Sabbath. And here I have a human being that I want to help on the Sabbath, and you're going to get on to me because I'm helping a, a fellow child of Abraham? Think about that. Think about those are the religious leaders keeping people from coming to Jesus, so he's upset because anybody that keeps anybody from Jesus should make the Lord very upset. And there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people out there that get in the way of people wanting to go to church. How many people have hurt your feelings or made you mad before, made you stop going to church? Because what people did. Let's look at Luke chapter 14. Now it happened as he went into the house, I'm sorry, 16. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be a steward. One of these days, each and every single one of you will be held accountable for the stewardship of your existence. Your existence, which is your life, your life choices, your life attitudes, what comes out of your mouth, what you allow to come spewing out, the actions you do, everything you're going to be accountable for. Every single, and here's the interesting thing is, the Lord speaks a lot about stewardship, and so I think the first thing we need to understand is a steward is somebody who has control of somebody else's stuff. For one... You are not your own. Any Christian that knows the scriptures knows that the word says you are no longer your own. You have been bought with a price. Right? You are no longer your own. So at that point, God's saying he owns you, but he's going to give you stewardship of your appetites, of your choices, of your fashion, Easter, whatever you are. He's going to give you the ability to be the steward of your talents, of who you are. He's going to give you the... And, and here's the deal. We don't get to pick what he stewards to us. This is all I got. In all its glory. Is me. That's it. But in a sense, I'm also a steward of this church. I'm a steward of my wife. I'm a steward of my finances. I'm a steward of my children. I'm a steward of my friendships. I'm a steward of so many things. But it's overwhelming. And as I was studying this, I was thinking about that. And I said, Lord, why? I, I can't do it without you. I 
tell you. I cannot do it without him. That's why I won't push money on you. Because I figure if I don't push money on you and I don't take up an offering and I don't do an offering service, then I can never think that I need that to go forward. That the only way that I know to go forward is if each week there's enough food to take me to the next week. And as long as he gives me enough food to go to the next week, guess where I'm going? The next week. (laughs) And I'll only go to the weeks he provides for me. If he's not providing for me, I'm not going. I've learned that a long time ago. I don't ever want to get into my flesh and think I'm supposed to accomplish anything. I want to trust the Lord with whatever stewardship he gives me. Listen, then the stewards, this is, this, what, what's crazy about this story is, is we read it a few months ago as we were referring to it, but it's, it's, it's very confusing for a lot of Christians when you read it. Then the steward said within himself, so he's talking to himself, he said, man, I just got called out, I just got caught, what am I going to do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me, I cannot dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. He says, I can't do labor work. But here's the thing about a steward, sometimes God gives you more just to see what you'll do with it. Will you just absorb it into your own flesh, or will you use it? To advance the kingdom. Do you use the resources of your life solely on your life? Or do you use the resources of your life to invest in what God has called us to in this life? Because listen, our home or our citizenship is not in this life. You guys are stewards of a wonderful child. And we are stewards of of how we love you guys. You just enjoy the stewardship that God gave you and you're doing a great job. All of us, adopted kids, adopted parents, stewards of children they didn't birth, but man, what stewards are you guys when you do that, when you take another person's child in and you make it your own? You become the steward, and you step up to that stewardship. See, some stewardships you get to step up to, some just fall in your lap. But it doesn't matter. You, you are responsible for whatever is in front of you, whatever is in your lap, whatever you have, the broken down car that you have. You are a steward of that, and you better do good with it, or you won't get a better one. If you can't take care of the $5 he's given you, he's not going to give you 10 The devil will. Because he wants to see you take it and indulge in it and soak it in and spend it on yourself. He wants to see you do that. God doesn't. Watch. This is, what, this is what's crazy. I can't beg. I can't dig. I have resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship that they may receive me into their houses. This is what's the most important thing is this guy is forward thinking. He's thinking ahead because the whole purpose of what God is teaching us here is as Christians, we're not thinking ahead. We're not, we're not shrewd enough to think ahead and to, to think because it's, uh, sometimes it may seem worldly to think ahead, to prepare. With our food pantry, with our food pantry, we think ahead, don't we, David? We think ahead, we go, man... We only got so much meat. We only got so much chicken. We, need, we only got so much, man. We only got two or 300 pounds. We need to make sure we keep five, six, 700 pounds of meat every week if we can because you never know. We, wanna, we just, we're forward thinking. We're shrewd like that. We're thinking for all of us. We're not just thinking for ourselves. We're thinking for all of us. We're shrewdly trying to make adva- take advantage of opportunities that come our way. That's being shrewd because this is what he says. So he called every one of his master's debtors, not his own debtors, his master's debtors. So he uses his master's name. How many people use the name of Christ? Christian. It says, it said, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and write 50. And, and the amounts here are like years worth amounts. This isn't just like a weak debt. This is like a year debt. These are big things. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. 
This guy, he cut his bill down even more. But notice what, this, what happened here. The, the funny thing is the master's so rich, it don't bother him. The master's so rich, it doesn't bother him that he lost anything. It's funny that he notices the shrewdness of the servant and commends him. And not only does the master commend the unjust steward, he commends, the, the Lord commends him. Watch. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. This is the Lord talking. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of the light. I can't find my clicker, man. Either. (laughs) Uh, Oh, here it is. I got it. The Lord says, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of the light. It sounds like he's saying Christians need to step step up on being shrewd. Now, we hear that word and it sounds negative. Let me tell you what that means, (laughs) what I've learned it means. And I'm going to use a great example that we all have been hearing about lately. And that's that beautiful food truck in the back. Listen, the, the funny thing is, the, the funny thing is, is, is our goal was just to feed disasters. And I know you know that story. I know, I know many of you already know that. But when, when we were offered a food trailer, we could have said, let's take that food trailer, let's park it in the back and save it for whenever there's a disaster. Right? That's what he bought it for. We could just park it in the back, set it back there and just practice using it and then just have it sitting for or or we could go hey it's an opportunity to generate income for that ministry people need to eat it's certified food trailer passed all the tests everybody's certified we can do it how about if we take that food trailer and 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 service and let it make a little income for the ministry we pay a couple people that work in there and then we use the money to save up for that isn't that being shrewd isn't that being shrewd? That's, that's going, you know what? That's forward thinking. That's exactly what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're always supposed to think forward. But what happens is most of your forward thinking, thinking is selfish. <laughs> I want to retire. You know? And, 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 and that's okay because you should be able to do some of those things when you retire. But if that's all you're lusting after, if that's all your money is going for is just your retirement to take care of you and there's no access or, 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 or place for the Lord to be used and all that or be glorified in any of that, we have to be careful because it's in our flesh. Then he says this, And I say to you, this is Jesus saying this. And I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon. Now, mammon is resources, the world's resources, financial money. That when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least, this is how he helps us understand what he's saying. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, Who will commit to you your trust, the true riches? Therefore, if you have not been faithful enough, if you can't be faithful with this crazy money that we have in doing your part. You know, the funny thing is, I have purposely stayed away from teaching on tithing and giving. I present opportunities sometimes, but I I purposely stay away from that because, man, you can turn on the TV and hear a message on that all day long. The radio on that all day long. There's so much more to who Christ is than money. But it sure seems like a lot of them spend a lot of time on money, although the Lord 
talks a lot about money. But he always talks it in a way that's not good. How about the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler comes to Jesus, hears these great things about Jesus. His heart is stirred. He seeks Jesus out. He finds Jesus. He comes up to him and says, what must I do to be saved? Follow the Ten Commandments. Follow the law. Do what's right. Love the Lord your God. He said, all these I've done since my youth. Because even when he said, even when the Lord said that to him, he still knew something was missing. That's why he said, I've done these things, but I still feel like something's missing. And the Lord says, yes, because it's connected to you. And you would have to be separated from it to know what it is. And he said, go and sell all you have. And give to the poor. And you'll have riches that you can't believe. He said he turned around and walked around, walked away sad. Think about that. Everything inside of him told him something was missing. Everything inside of him told him that all the wealth he had, he still had something missing. I tell my daughter, no matter how successful you will be in this life, if the Lord is not a part of your life, you will not be successful. I don't want you to be successful apart from the Lord at all. I don't want my kids successful. I don't want them rich and famous without the Lord. I don't want them to know what it's like to live happy and all that without the Lord. I don't want that for them. I want them to need him. I want them to have to cry out to him. Because in this life, it's going to make you cry. This life will make you cry. Take your loved ones from you. This ain't no game. This ain't for show. I'm not doing this because I I like it. I do it because I know how serious it is. And God has given me a particular gift. And I want to use it to glorify him. And it's my life. He said, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, If you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Serving the Lord is cost, cost you time, lot. We are like Paul. And Paul is letting us know that he himself understands that he's been, he's he's a steward of the gospel. And he says, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. See, I get to be that steward sometimes too as I get to share the gospel with somebody that's never heard it before. Share the good news with somebody that's never heard it the way that I'm sharing it with them before. And man, I get to be a steward of that as well. But so do you. Did that change? Okay, take me back. One of these days, I'm going to be professional. This ain't working. So when I go like this, click it. Therefore, you also be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all the people? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward? That's a key part because wisdom tells you to look at your past, to to think about your future in relation to your past. And what you've learned about certain choices or certain ideas or certain directions that you were choosing for your life, all that you have to take into consideration when you make future choices going forward. Quit making the same choices that stumble you week after week after week. Do 
Did I just turn it on? I forgot to turn it on. That's why you love me. <laughs> Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them portion of food in due season? Listen, not too many people get to be this steward. Not too many people get to be the steward that gets to give people food in due season. But man, what a beautiful opportunity to be that steward in due season. Man, Lord, let me be that steward, right? Let me be that steward, Lord. Let me, let me see, let me, let me be a part, Lord, because food is not always physical. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and in an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. I've been reading, and you've probably been reading, If you, there's lots of information in our world of churches being attacked and pastors being attacked and pastors falling and churches being split and just chaos and chaos and chaos. And, and, then, and as a pastor myself, I just pray and I say, Lord, please, please protect me from, from the outside influences. Please, Lord, don't let me want more than what you've already given me. Don't let me want ever more than what my wife is to me and what you've already blessed me with. I'm glad, that, I'm glad that we got to start in our backyard doing church and just kind of, instead of doing gimmicks and things and trying to flashy this and flashy that, and I'm so thankful that we got to stay. I'm sorry. In Matthew 20, it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard and, and here's the deal is, is, is uh, each of us have to be stewards of our time as well. It says, now when he had agreed with the laborers for denarius a day, see, so he went out early in the morning, six, seven o'clock in the morning, he found some guys and th- they said they would work for a denarius a day. He sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour of the day, right before lunch. And others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to him, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went again. He went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to him, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, because nobody hired us. He said to him, you also go in the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. Now, if you have guys hired throughout the day, you think that he's going to pay this one more and this one, this one, this one different. The Lord is teaching us something very valuable that's, that's hard to learn as human Christians, especially American Christians. So when, he, when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages beginning with the last to the first. He did that on purpose. The guy that had only been there an hour. And when those who came were, who were hired about the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner. Now, this is, this is when I think we turn into Christian Americans or American Christians. Because we get to that place, and the first thing we come to is... Fair. Fair. What's fair? This is not fair. It's not fair. You're not fair. It's not fair you were born to that family. It's not fair you were born like that. It's not fair you were born here. It's not fair. This is the Lord speaking this. And when they received it, they complained against the landowner saying, these last men had only worked one hour. See, now they're making it their business. And you made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. 
I wish to give to this last man. Same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I'm so good? So the last we first, the first last. Many are called, but few are chosen. When I became a Christian, I believe the Lord fast-tracked me. I mean, I've been a Christian 30 years this month. I've been a Christian a long time. I've been in ministry, pastoring now for over 20 years. And I'm sure there's people that are, wonder how I did it, how I became successful, how we have a a church with staff that we pay, how we have the finances to do that when we don't take up an offering. There's a lot of questions people have. But when I look at my life, I just go, Lord, they they need to go to you if they want to know how to do it. I I, I just, I remember Chuck Smith would say, people go to him and say, man, you know, what's your, how do you do church growth? He said, man, I just try to feed the sheep healthy food and just let them do what healthy sheep do and they reproduce. And I believe that God has blessed us. I'm not, it's all him. It's all him. And I, and, 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 and I feel like I'm the last laborer. I feel like I'm ahead of those that put in all those works for all those years. You hear about the missionary who was across the seas for 20 plus years and he happened to come back across this, uh, on his boat the same time the president was showing up on his boat and there was all this fanfare All these people out there blowing and doing all this for the president and there was nobody there to greet him when he got off the boat. He just complained to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, I'm doing all this work. I'm out here doing all this suffering all that here in the sea, away from my family and I come home and nobody's there to greet me. Guess what the Lord said? You're not home yet. We're not home yet. This This isn't the place for glory. This is not the place for glory. This is not the place for glorying. This is not the place to be self-idol worshipped. This isn't a time and a place to, to just let everybody see your face. This is a time that people need to know your heart. This is a time that people need to know what's inside of you. This is a time that people need to know what God has done for you. Be a good steward of the life God gave you. Be a good steward of the life remaining that God has given you. You're good. You're here. You're indestructible until you're not. But as long as you're indestructible, you give to the Lord what is His, and He gave you stewardship to take care of His business, not yours. What I've learned is I'm taking care of His business. He's all about my business. All about my business. You know, one of the ways that we're safe around here is that I brought the Bacas in. When the Bacas came in to work for us from Albuquerque, New Mexico, two years ago, Jason had high expectations. He was watching us on Facebook, you know, during 2020, 2020, we were doing everything on Facebook. He was watching us. He was getting excited, believing we were all this and believing we were all that. And, and, and I wanted to live up to what he thought we were, not because I wanted to just show it, but I want... I wanted to know how he saw us, and I wanted to make sure that we were delivering what we thought we were selling. And I said, what better way to bring them on staff? That way they can tell me, hey, this isn't what I signed up for. Hey, this, you know, hey, but so far it's been great. And you've been a blessing, and you've helped us even. You're like the last hour person. When everybody else is saying, man, I've been here, they get to come in. Listen, you're the last hour person. God chose you to be here with us. He chose me, didn't he, Dad? Chose me, didn't he, baby? I got a great wife. The last one. Because this isn't about money, it's about resources and your stewardship over your resources. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words. 
from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth. You know that in the dark ages, the Catholic Church were known for taking and selling indulgences. That's history. <laughs> and what they would do is they would sell these indulgences and, what, and you could pay a certain amount of money and you would be forgiven of certain things. And so they were going around selling God's grace, selling God's grace, because it was a good money maker. It made money. The Catholic Church is the richest institution in the whole world, pretty much. You go to Mexico and all those towns are in poverty, but those churches, man, those churches. God's not glorified in any of them. He's not glorified in any of those churches. The more gold, the less they're worth. Who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Now, that's what the Pharisees of Jesus' day. And then he says this, from such withdraw yourself. But he's also talking about us in the Christian church now because that's, that happens. And then he says this, now godliness with contentment is great gain. Here's the truth, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root, not all the roots, but it is a number one root. <laughs> it is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Listen, it says some are from the faith got caught up in this. Just check yourself. I don't know if, if this is speaking to you or not. But what I do know is speaking to all of us to measure ourselves by. Not, don't measure yourself by me. You measure yourself by the word of what it says. And if you'll do that, you'll be safe. You'll be safe. God doesn't hate rich people. He hates people that are rich who don't care about his stuff and what he's called us to do. We've been very fortunate. And um, I've been very fortunate to have been given the things that I've been given. And let me tell you something. They've been given to me. I did not earn them. I did not pursue them. I just pursued the Lord and truth. And I pray that this morning you will understand your responsibility for your stewardship over your life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. And Lord, I just pray that you teach us, Lord, our responsibility every day. What our responsibilities are, Lord, as Christians. As stewards of our lives, Lord. Lord, I pray that on my day that you will and say, welcome, thy good and faithful servant, Lord. Not because of my actions, Lord, but because of your grace over my life. And I pray for those in here this morning, Lord God, who are going through moments of hard times and emotional distress, Lord. And Father, I just pray for their hearts and minds this morning to find peace in you for the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.